So now I can go ahead and I can use my future value idea. Right? I can say the future value will be equal to some repayment times. And we have tables for this, right? You remember it took us ages to do it line by line, especially, my goodness, if there's 240 lines. That doesn't sound like fun. But that's why we have these tables, yeah? We've calculated the numbers that are going to be useful to us. So now go to your future value table. So this is a few pages back. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, so have a look. Can you see the right row and the right column that I'm after? Do you see it? Look, 240 is here, and I'm going to count across to 0.4%. I think it's that number there, isn't it? 401.6750. Okay. Now, before we go on, please, please, please think about what this is saying, right? What this is saying is there's some repayment. That's the number I'm trying to work out, which is why I've written repayment, because I, I don't know what it is. And after 240 lots of this 0.4% interest, I want it to get to this future value, right? Because that's the actual debt that I'll end up paying off, or the full will end up paying off, okay? So therefore, the future value is going to be 755.943 and three cents is your repayment times that. So therefore, if what I'm trying to do is make the repayment the subject, solve for the repayment, then what must I do to both sides? Divide by that number. I'm going to divide by 401.675. Um, that's a comma. Equals. Okay, what do you got? One eight. Yeah. Yep, yeah. and? Point nine seven six seven nine seven. Ninety eight cents. Oh, sure. So that's okay. the monthly repayment. <laughs> okay, so what have we just established? This is the monthly repayment such that if I go for 240 months, 20 years, and I get 0.4% interest for each of my repayments. If I pay off this, or if full pays off this, then eventually, in 20 years, it will be worth this, which is a huge sum of money. It's much bigger than what he borrowed, but that's what the amount he's borrowed also grows into. Does that make sense? So his debt has grown over 20 years, but his repayments will also grow according to the future value setup. Okay? So that's the answer. However, like, this is a long way to go about this. Okay. It's correct, however, we've actually learned something that will do a bit of a shortcut for us, okay? This idea here um, of getting to the, thinking about the future value and then sort of backtracking. This is exactly what present value is about. Do you remember how we worked out present value? We thought about the future value and then we tried to reverse engineer the compound interest formula, okay? Which is exactly what we've done here. You've gone to the future and then you sort of step back in time, okay? So another way of getting the same number, which is more efficient, but it's a bit counterintuitive, is, maybe just put on the side here, quicker method. With your calculators there, again. Instead of the future value table, I want you to come forward a few pages to the present value table. Okay, so now, I just want to make sure that I'm looking at the right part of it. Yeah, good. Now, I want you to think about it this way. Instead of going forward in time to imagine what will your debt become, and then work out your repayment. Okay. Instead, I'm going to say that the future value is going to be, sorry, not the future value, the present value, like what you have to, what full has to pay off right now, every time, today, is going to be this repayment times, and again, I need to look at the table for the appropriate value, okay? So I'm still going to 240, and I'm still going to 0.4%, so on this table, it's a different spot, the 0.4% is the first column, and I come all the way down to 240. Now it's a different number, 
Of course it's a different number because I'm thinking about it in a different way, right? Um, the number is 154-0933. Okay? So, the repayment is going to need to get to the present value of $290,000, right? It's like if you had $290,000 invested it today, $290,000. This is the different value I'm going to divide by, which kind of automates all this work for me. So I'm going to proceed through the equation just like I did before, but my numbers are all a bit different. Now, if we've read our table correctly, and please go ahead and verify this on your calculator, when you go ahead and you crunch, $290,000 divided by 154.0933. You should end up here. Do I have some nods? Yes. yes? Wonderful. Okay. Now, why did I show you both ways? Um, personally, I like this way because it shows you, it, it helps you understand what's happening. That this thing grows and your thing needs to grow to keep up with it. Okay. And eventually they will meet at this sum. This Sort of feels a bit weird to me. Why do I use present value? If you want to remember it this way, it's because Fung is paying in the present day, right? So he has to keep on making those repayments, and this is where you're going to end up. This is clearly faster, but if you find it easier to understand this, then I would do it this way, because it's more important that you understand what's going on than that you just get a right number at the end, okay? So in conclusion, when you're trying to repay a loan, you can use either the future value or the present value table. So long as you do it to the correct number, okay? So have a look. See this number here? This number is a number in the future that he will have paid off. So that's why you use the future value table. This number here is how much he owes right now, today. He, he just borrowed it, okay? So being that this is a debt that he has at present, you use the present value table. Does that make sense? So the key for these questions, um, as we come back to AE, I've already written down the questions I'd like you to do on the board. The key for these questions is just to think about, are you in the present? Is your debt in the present? Or is your debt in the future? And that will tell you which table you need to use. Okay. <laughs>